now apply that theory to the migrant situation, assist them, integrate them, create work for them, which benefits the host country, maybe there's a potential Marshall Plan for North Africa. Let's talk to Tarek Osman about it. He's with the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, joining us from our London studios, and we thank you for your time. You know, there's an example here of uh, Morocco, and, and uh, uh, something which Morocco and the, and the EU have worked on together. They granted citizenship to 150,000 Africans, and you guys, the EBRD, invested more than $350 million to get people into work there. So they're there, you're creating work, it's good for the economy, uh, that just seems to make sense. The, the initiative between the European Union and Morocco is a very laudable uh, initiative, of course, but it's targeting a specific situation, it's one, one measure among many others. Mm -hmm. The key issue is what you have highlighted before, which is the macro picture of in North Africa there is at least 100 million people under 30 years old. Two thirds of these are in their teens. So effectively, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's an issue of education and therefore of finding jobs after that. And what many international organizations, such as the EBRD, are trying to do is to identify areas of trying to help in that. In the case of the EBRD, is, it's through helping the private sector with a special focus on small and medium-sized enterprises which if you look at the economies of most of North African countries, that's a, a fundamental segment that could potentially increase the employment of the young. So what do you think, you know, I outlined just before we came to you, I outlined that sort of idea of a, of a Marshall Plan or applying that theory uh, to North Africa. I mean, is that, is that feasible, do you think? Well, in North Africa, it has been touted a number of times right now that you need to have substantial increases in, in infrastructure and along the lines, a major investment uh, framework along the lines that you have highlighted. Is it feasible? I hope it's feasible. However, we have to keep in mind, of course, that right now across many Western countries there are austerity programs, there are huge fiscal issues. So it is an objective. Whether it is realizable in the short to medium term, I do not know. But what I think is extremely important right now is the focus again on not necessarily just the, uh, the bridge in the fiscal gaps in mm -hmm. many North African countries, not just the, the pure infrastructure projects. Very important, all of that extremely important. But what is fundamental to the problem that you are raising is youth unemployment. How mm -hmm. do you get that down? And how do you keep it sustainable, the idea of sustainable employment for the generations and generations of young Arabs who are coming to the market in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Mm. That is the fundamental issue. And the private sector making a competitive, dynamic, sustainable private sector, especially small and medium-sized enterprises in these countries, I think that is the, the key solution. Step back even further for me, if you could, and, and take it back to those countries where people are coming from. You talked about fiscal gaps. What are the fiscal gaps like in Eritrea, Somalia, Mali, all these places where the people are actually starting their journeys from. You have a very frustrating situation sometimes because you have in many countries, especially in, in Eastern Africa and in Western Africa actually, you do have political instability uh, that of course leads not just to the absence of foreign direct investment but also to a huge slowdown, sometimes frustrating slowdown in local trade. In, in private investment from these countries into their own economies. All of that makes any kind of economic growth, even if it's really minimal, absent, extremely slow economic growth, sometimes no economic growth, sometimes contraction even. And again, that translates, forget about the, the macroeconomic statistics, it translates to very difficult social situations. And when you look at populations throughout North Africa, Eastern Africa, Western Africa that are very young, demographically very young, then it's, it's, it's logical that you find many people trying to escape the very difficult socioeconomic conditions. And the solution that many venture into, which is a very desperate solution, it tells you how desperate their situations mm. are, is to try to risk it all, if you'd like, to mm. know to reach the, the southern shores of Europe. Um, we need political so resolutions as well, don't down. we? Sorry to interrupt you. We need political resolutions. Just so many of the countries, whether you're talking about the countries where people are coming from 
or where they're going to. You know, uh, uh, Libya, for example, there's so much political upheaval everywhere. This inst instability uh, needs to be addressed, and I, I suspect that's going to be a really long-term thing. Libya is an important point to highlight here because it has been the most important point of departure for many of those migrants. You're absolutely right in the sense that there are many problems in, in Libya. Sometimes it is portrayed as uh, an issue of some tribes that have armed militias. Sometimes it's portrayed as the eastern province in war with the western province. In, in Libya, there are many unfolding uh, tensions mm. that are integrating and interacting with each other to create a, a very complicated situation. And right now, as you know, there is an initiative led by the United Nations to try to find some sort of a reconciliation. Of course, we wish them very well and we are in close touch with them. Mm -hmm. But I think the situation in the country is very complicated and I think Libya will take quite some time to arrive at any sort of stability. But the, the macro point, again, to go back to the issue that you highlighted, the macro point is absolutely correct. It is not just that political situations result in political dilemmas. They do have huge both social and economic ramifications. Tara Gosman, we thank you so much for your time. Thanks for joining us on Counting the Cost.